So continuing, last time we ended with uh, introduction to the South Pole Aiken Basin. This is a giant impact structure on the uh, southern part of the moon. Now, that big of an impact structure probably would have like cracked open the moon uh, if it had been dead on. So most likely this is like a, 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 a shallow angle impact. So, uh, so we've got the surface of the moon and then something came in at a shallow angle and did like a giant scoop of material out. And so we, that's kind of what we think may have happened to make the South Pole Aiken Basin rather than a dead, rather than a dead straight on impact. The uh, Chinese have been investigating the moon and uh, they launched a couple spacecraft, several spacecraft to the moon and uh, one of them orbiting the moon, but one of them actually has a lander uh, that landed in January of 2019 and has been slowly uh, crawling through uh, the uh, crawling across the surface of the moon uh, and it landed for the very first time the very first lander on the far side of the moon now up until this time every mission has been to the near side of the moon so that there's a direct line of sight between the spacecraft and earth that way the spacecraft could send signals straight back to earth earth could send signals straight to the spacecraft. Uh, this spacecraft, on the other hand, uh, land on the far side. That had never been done before because there's no way of communicating directly from Earth. However, we now have a variety of satellites orbiting the moon. In the past, we generally didn't have more than like one at a time orbiting the moon and sometimes none at all. And so there was no way reliably saying that, that a spacecraft on the far side could beam signals up to a satellite that could then be relayed to Earth. Now that's actually the case. And so now uh, this, this, this spacecraft can robotically move around on the far side and study things. It landed in Von Karman Crater, which is actually a crater inside of the South Pole Aiken Basin. And as it's been moving around, it has found, in fact, that uh, many of the rocks uh, that, that it has found are very rich in iron with olivine and uh, pyroxene. These are the sort of minerals you expect in the mantle of a planet. Uh, not so much on the, near the surface in this sort of concentration does indicate that maybe this giant impact did crack the surface somewhat and some mantle rocks did work their way up. Now, the question is, well, why is it only partially filled instead of the other? So we'll get back to that later. Mari Imbrium is the biggest impact structure on the near side of the moon. Uh, the Sea of Rains is what Mari Imbrium means. And so it, it is, if you, if you look at the moon, full moon around midnight, it's kind of in the upper left quadrant of the moon. It's got these mountain ranges that are encircling it right here. Uh, it also has another crater right here on the, along the edge of it, like carved a chunk out of, of, of the edge of it. Uh, that, when that sort of thing happens, we call that a bay. Uh, in, in keeping with the nautical theme of call, calling the whole thing a sea. So uh, lava uh, has, uh, basalt type lava has filled it in, okay. Later impacts have made more craters here. Now notice one of these craters here, the lava actually flowed into, so that means that that, that crater had to have formed between the time of the first big impact and when this all got filled in. That suggests that, the, that this, was, this was a process, that, this, that you did not suddenly crack the surface and then lava filled it in uh, in a short period of time. This was a very long extended process. Uh, other craters happened later and were not filled in, indicating they happened after the whole event. Um, and then we have these other uh, mountain ranges in here, uh, uh, probably uh, material thrown up uh, by other impacts, and then the lava kind of worked the way around them. We see wrinkle ridges in some of the seas. Uh, th this is believed to be compressional features here, uh, indicating that, that uh, uh, there's stress on the rocks squeezing them. 
Okay, or this could be uh, flow ridges uh, uh, from the uh, uh, from the uh, uh, magma itself. So there's several different possibilities for this. Okay, rills. These are like lava channels across the moon, like like rivers. So as lava was flowing along the surface from big uh, uh, flood basalt type eruptions, it would run down these channels. Uh, we see similar sort of things on on uh, Earth near Hawaii, where there's sometimes these lava rivers that once the lava is gone, you have this this channel left where the river had been running, where the lava had been running. Uh, uh, one recently formed, in fact, in the last few years uh, on the flanks of Kilauea. Uh, the other sort of thing we found here, though, on the moon is sometimes the top of these um, channels will solidify and lava will keep flowing underneath. That gives rise to lava tubes. And we find these again on Earth in several places. Again, Hawaii has some very good preserved lava tubes. Um, and some of these lava tubes can be quite large. There's indications that some of the lava tubes on the moon uh, can be quite a, buried quite a ways underground and have enormous diameters, uh, sometimes maybe the size of a football field uh, in, inside there. There's a couple places where there's actually little holes in the surface of the moon where we believe that the surface collapsed into one of these extinct lava channels uh, or, la uh, or lava tubes. And this is one, one possibility they, they've brought forward in terms of colonizing the moon is actually putting uh, a colony underground in these lava tubes uh, because that would leave the ground above to actually protect against radiation from space. Remember, we have cosmic rays from deep space. We also have solar radiation. This is very extensive amounts of radiation. In fact, the um, Chinese lander, the Changi lander on the, uh, Changi, uh, on the Yoto rover on the far side of the moon, uh, uh, has measured enormous amounts of radiation very much in what in in the the range of what we expected to find in the moon so this is not really a surprise but it does indicate that the surface of the moon would be very much inhospitable to a permanent moon base unless you do some kind of radiation mitigation uh, and the best cheapest way of doing that would be to uh, basically bury your uh, moon base and let the 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 ground itself absorb the radiation